Thrawn seems to be acting kind of strange, and it all has to do with Ahsoka Tano. Hello again friends and acolytes, and welcome back to the channel. The Grand Admiral in Thrawn is the man known to have a plan for just about everything, and if he doesn't have a preconceived plan, it doesn't take long for him to analyze his enemies and create one. However, as we talked about before, one thing that his tactical genius isn't able to completely quantify is the Force itself. The esteemed Grand Admiral is happy to use the power of the Night Mothers to stay on top of Ahsoka and her position, but it seems he's making a concerted effort not to confront Ahsoka Tano directly. We believe that this is because Thrawn actually fears Ahsoka and for good reason. Fears what she might alone be able to do against his Imperial Remnant, or at least the plan of his return. As one of the last members of the Jedi Order alive, it's clear that he has a great deal of respect for Ahsoka, especially since his biggest and greatest defeat to date has come at the hands of Ezra Bridger, a young Jedi Padawan. So why do we believe that Thrawn is so afraid of Ahsoka specifically, and what is he going to do about it? It's time to open up yet another holocron and explain why of all the Jedi, it is Ahsoka Tano that Thrawn appears to be the most afraid of. Thrawn definitely fears Ahsoka, or at least has many reservations about her and about confronting her directly. When he hears from the Night Mothers that Ahsoka is not only alive but on her way, he was quite displeased, going so far as to change his overall opinion on Lord Balin and his effectiveness as a whole. He then makes an order that seems a bit drastic for Thrawn, gun down every purgle that enters the system. This is before, though, he gets his hands on Ahsoka's case line. His first instinct is to literally set up a major artillery ambush against a Jedi, which ended up manifesting as a huge minefield deployed at the mouth of the Hyperlane. Thrawn is one of those that typically prefers a more subtle approach to dealing with his enemies, unless he deems excessive force necessary. Conserving time, materials, and manpower has always been paramount to Grand Admiral Thrawn, so that he has enough resources to allocate to bigger operations when the time is correct to strike. Here though, he not only deploys a whole minefield over the exit of the hyperlane, but he primes the hyperspace ring as a battle station ready to open fire on his command, along with several squadrons of fighters on standby. Again though, this is all before he learns anything about the Jedi that is pursuing him. Just the mere mention of her being on her way is enough for Thrawn to prep as though he is about to take on an entire army fleet. This sort of overcompensation comes as a result of his previous dealings with the Jedi. Thrawn knows how powerful they are and is quite familiar with their effectiveness on the battlefield, having witnessed it firsthand both as an ally and as an enemy. Again, the defeat that landed him in this exact situation was because of a Jedi. We are also still under the assumption that he has lost many of his troops to Ezra while on Peridia, so if this one Jedi has given him this much trouble, I highly doubt he's ready to tangle with the Jedi arriving with a pot of Purgle a second time. But although Thrawn is apprehensive in this moment, we wouldn't say he is outright terrified of Ahsoka. Not until in the most recent episode, when he got her Inquisitor data file, and Thrawn learns who she was trained by. He relents on his original defensive plan and decides to go a different route. The big reveal clicks everything into place and may even make him fear her more. Her master was Anakin Skywalker. Notice how Thrawn doesn't refer to Anakin as Jedi Knight or any of those honorifics. Rather, he refers to him by his military title, calling him General Anakin Skywalker. This is because Thrawn continues to have a massive amount of respect for Anakin due to their previous times working together. In both the Clone Wars and Galactic Civil War, Thrawn had had experience with both Anakin and Vader, having his opinions about each of them individually. When Thrawn is brought before the Emperor and learns of the alleged Jedi uprising, his first question to him was about Anakin specifically. Thrawn wanted to know what happened to Skywalker. The Emperor gives him the usual spiel about Anakin dying bravely in order to save the Chancellor, and Thrawn briefly mourns his old friend. This was because of him and Anakin working together once to save the Chiss people. Later though, Thrawn would work with Vader and deduce his true identity, and the truth of who Vader was. The two though came to a mutual understanding and respect for one another yet again. With this time, Thrawn admiring Vader's fierce loyalty to the Empire and willingness to go to any lengths to achieve complete victory. 
But in both of these times, he learned valuable lessons about Anakin, which was now being put to use yet again and brought up for Ahsoka. Thrawn predicts that like her master, Ahsoka will be extremely erratic, unconventional, and difficult to pin down. She will operate in the unexpected ways and try things that seem ridiculous or impossible and somehow make them work. Thrawn even recognizes that going against her head-on is not only foolish but straight-out futile. Instead, Thrawn is circumventing her. His best plan is to not combat her, but simply guide her path of destruction in the way that he wants it to go, all the while keeping her at a fair distance, as if Ahsoka gets close, his operation is doomed. Thrawn is not only trying to spend time and resources to keep them separated, which would typically be the strategically sound thing to do, rather though, Thrawn is playing the long game, though it seems that at this time, he is playing the extra long game because he's already thinking farther ahead than he has ever had to before simply because he knows who trained Ahsoka. By making these small allowances, and knowing when to attack and retreat his forces, Thrawn is keeping his enemies at the other end of a long pole, as if he were a diver surrounded by sharks, knowing that one-on-one, -on -one, Ahsoka would certainly defeat any force he could throw at her at the time. He is trying to waste her time so that he can build his cargo and escape. He literally seeks to run from Ahsoka. We can see how much reverence he has for Ahsoka and her friends when he was looking over the battle map, watching his forces be picked off one by one. He compliments his enemy and their teamwork, stating that they are like the Jedi of old, each of them a one-man army. This spurs Thrawn into laying out very specific plans to create distance and waste time. For once, Thrawn isn't even trying to defeat Ahsoka, he is trying to literally escape her. While some may deem this cowardly or irrational, Thrawn is actually making the very wise call here. He isn't even dreaming of trying to underestimate Ahsoka or Balin for that matter. He clearly considers Force sensitives to not only be extremely powerful and useful, but also incredibly dangerous, even those that are allied with him for a time. He says that Balin is flawed, but not as a person or a warrior, but as a flawed ally. Thrawn's meaning in this would be a mistake to keep Balin around, due to the fact of his unpredictability, and the high likelihood that he will quickly attempt to betray Thrawn. We typically like to perceive the idea of fear as a bad thing, however, I would deem the situation for Thrawn to be a healthy fear and a respect, much like it's normal for someone to have a healthy fear of a wild animal. He knows very little about Ahsoka Tano. What he does know though, is that she survived Order 66 and the fall of the Empire and was trained by General Skywalker. Thrawn is relatively vulnerable without the Yasala Miri, as there is no good way to confront the Force Sensitives in any direct way yet. So the only thing that he can do is not face them at all, keep them at a distance, and keep them distracted. Thrawn has not only learned from his experience and failure with Ezra Bridger and the Purgles, but now he is scared by the very fact that the Jedi are pursuing him. While Thrawn does not fear the Force itself, he doesn't understand it, and he certainly now fears the way that these particular Jedi use it, which is far are different than how the Jedi of the Clone Wars did. These Jedi have evolved. Make no mistake, Ahsoka is extremely powerful and extremely dangerous. Every Force-sensitive Thrawn currently has his radar on is erratic and unpredictable. They're all so much stranger than the Jedi of old and the ones that he once studied. None of his knowledge of the Jedi apply here because of how this group in particular operates. This is even reflected with Hu Yang when he constantly critiques Ahsoka about not following Jedi protocol. But that's kind of the point. Thrawn can easily predict typical Jedi and the patterns and their MO, but these new Jedi have learned from growing up in a complete wartime environment, forged in the fires of the Empire, the Inquisitor, and the Sith. Thrawn is fighting an enemy that was bred specifically to fight the Empire, and for that, Thrawn is afraid and for good reason. But of course, what do you think of this, my friends? Do you believe in our assessment, or do you think that there is something else going on? What are your thoughts on Thrawn's healthy fear for the Jedi and Ahsoka Tano? As always, my friends, thank you so much for visiting the channel today, and may the Force be with you.